so guys i'll be checking out this channel for the first time geography now so they do this geography now for different countries so um uh, i just chose Gem germany for the first one so let's see because i've never checked anything about germany before um so let me start with germany with this channel um shout out to them subscribe to them watch their video if you have not let's get right into it all right Leader Hosen Schnitzel beer, Bratwurst order bread and beer, hmm. complicated history beer, no humor, EDM, and gummy bears that will kind of like give you diarrhea, but it's like worth it. Wait, this is how the channel uh, is. Such horrible stereotypes that every German is so sick and tired of hearing. <laughs> the, gummy guy, guys, guys, I was trying thinking that this was like some kind of serious channel like this. Now, I'm not saying this is this style is terrible. I'm just I'm surprised. I just didn't picture picture it like this. <laughs> like, and they said geography now. I was thinking like they would just be going to all this. Okay, this is how it is. This is how it is. This is the geography. This is the culture. Oh, I didn't think it was going to be this jokes joke field. But I think this should be interesting. Yeah, I I, I love light-hearted stuff like that sometimes. It's time to learn geography now. Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. So we've conquered wow. Belgium's castle, jumped through Denmark's lagoon, danced through France's forest, and now we've made it to the final boss of the EU, Kingpin Germany. Level one, begin. Ah, you know why I'm smiling. Yep, Germany has a lot of territorial anomalies. We'll get into that in a little bit, but first, Germany is located in central Western Europe, bordered by nine other countries. Don't forget little Luxembourg, <laughs> with small coasts on the North and Baltic Seas, which they own about 50 small islands. Now, Germany, like the US, is a federal republic, which has 16 smaller states, or Bundesland, each with its own constitution, three of which are cities, the capital Berlin, okay. Hamburg, and Bremen, which is actually kind of like two cities, including Bremerhaven on the coast, but they kind of act like one entity. <laughs> Fun side note, Lower Saxony is actually geographically situated further north than regular Saxony. Now let's jump into the fun stuff. Now we already discussed the Jungholz Quadrapoint and the Venbon Railway enclaves with Belgium and Austria. However, there's a few more. The entire town of Bussingen am Hochrhein is surrounded by Switzerland, whereas part of the Constance is cut off by the Rhine River and surrounded by Switzerland. However, immediately across the river, a small patch of empty land on the German side actually belongs to Switzerland. Finally, they split the island of Usedom with Poland in the north. Germany is interesting because every state in the country has its own distinct culture, dialect, every history, state traditions. I mean, Bavarians will be quite drastically different from Schleswig Holsteiners. Mecklenburg-Pommern will be different from Saarland. This all has to do with ancient and recent history. Basically, in the quickest way I can summarize this, Germanic tribes, Roman wars, Charlemagne, three kingdoms. This guy marries an Italian, creating a whole new mess called the Holy Roman Empire made up of 300 smaller separate kingdoms, states, and dukedoms, which had nothing to do with Romans. Teutonic Knights, Brandenburgs became Prussia, Habsburgs became Austrians, Lithuanians and Poles made their own thing, whereas the Hungarians joined the Austrians. Wars, wars, battle, okay, battle. Okay, Napoleon okay, okay, over. okay, okay. Wait, 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 wait. My head is spinning. My head is spinning. Ah, oh, calm down. Calm down. Or should I slow down this video a bit? No, I'm not that dull. I am not a dull person. I can, my brain can follow. My brain can follow. No. Wow, that's, that was, that was a lot of information in, in one minute. Whew. Okay, that's, states and dukedoms, which had nothing to do with Romans. Teutonic Knights, Brandenburgs became Prussia, Habsburgs became Austrians, Lithuanians and Poles made their own thing, whereas the Hungarians joined the Austrians. Wars, wars, battles, battles, Napoleon comes over and messes everything up, and finally, <laughs> German nationalism surges, and in 1871, Napoleon, Otto von Bismarck creates the first proto-German unified state. And then they're all like, oh dang, we came late to this game. We gotta scramble for some colonies. And that's how all of these countries at one point spoke German. Oh, and also, keep in mind, like 300 years before this, a German banking company obtained colonial rights to Venezuela for like 20 years they were looking for the lost city of el dorado so technically you can kind of say germans colonized the americas but it wasn't like a nationalized conquest thing fast forward even more and then you get world war one the monarchy ends treaty of versailles they lose land nazis come in world war ii germany splits in two for about 40 years and then finally we get the germany we have today east germany consisting of these states is today still quite different from the rest of germany as it was first occupied and influenced by the soviet union they are generally not as well off economically as the rest of the country as you can still see the block Soviet style buildings sprawled throughout the regions. In fact, the city of Berlin was split in half and the west side was actually an enclave of West Germany only accessible by train and highway. You can even see from a satellite image the divide. East Berlin still uses the wow. yellowish tinted sulfur oh. vapor light bulbs, whereas the west still uses yes. fluorescent and mercury arc white. Wow, that is very interesting. Look at this. This is really interesting. So, 
<laughs> so that they're using that yeah, they're using different types of bulb. That's really interesting, man. But why is that? I guess they are still kind of divided. Is that what they're trying to say? Or, like or maybe that division that was that happened during that time still passed down to these modern times. That's really interesting light bulbs. Now the funny thing is, although Berlin is the largest city in Germany, the busiest airports are actually Frankfurt, Munich, Dusseldorf, with Berlin Tegel ranking at number four. Otherwise, some top notable landmarks and spots would be the Brandenburg Gate, the Valhalla, Cologne Cathedral, the Ulminster Church, the tallest in the world, the Berlin Victory Column, and hundreds and hundreds of castles all over. The most notable one probably being Neuschwanstein, the concept behind Disney's Cinderella Castle. Hmm. Germany also has over 400 zoos, more than any other country in the world. And of course, everybody knows about the Autobahn, the highway system in which if you see this sign it means there's no speed limit and it's like that for a huge portion of the road wow and no wonder considering how vast and wide those cultivated countrysides can get time for level two okay think of it this way in germany the more down you go the more up you move basically germany lies on the atlantic shelf in the north that starts with the mud flats in the north sea seriously this island right here is accessible only for a few hours by foot until the tide comes and floods everything then everything just kind of creeps up into the alps in the south by bavaria and baden-württemberg with the highest mountain Zugspitze, located right along the border with austria kind of like france germany is filled with a vast irrigating network of rivers like the spray elbe vesa rhine and of course the mighty danube that starts here about a third of the land is arable and another third is woodland and after a millennia of civilization Germans have cultivated the crap out of their country. Most agriculture of course happens in the north flat plains and the central regions of the country which is by the way kind of like Europe's tornado alley due to its position sandwiched between the arctic blasts of Scandinavia and the moist warm jet streams of the Mediterranean below Germany can be an atmospheric war zone in the summer. There are more wow. tornadoes on average in Germany than any other country in Europe. Speaking of flat farmland Germany is the world's largest rye and hop producer. Germans absa freak Absolutely love their bread. There are over 300 different kinds of bread in the country, more types than any other country in the world, and almost every meal incorporates some kind of slice or small bun or brötchen of bread. Hast du gluten free? Nein! Germans are heavy meat eaters, specifically in pork. They basically know every possible way to cook a pig. <laughs> over 50 different types of sausage exist alongside schnitzels, rouladen, sauerbraten, schweinzeit. The way he said that stuff. <laughs> I don't know why that sounded funny to me. <laughs> There's so many ways how to cook a pig. <laughs> I really don't know why that was funny. Seriously, like it shouldn't be funny. It should not be funny. It shouldn't be. I don't know why that was so funny to me. Yeah, I mean that. I personally do not like pork that much, but there are some porks I have eaten. Like I was so shocked. There was one. My friends took my my friend took me to one place like that that they prepare pork. I, I ate that stuff like me that doesn't like this meat. I was eating it like some gluten. Like what the hell? What did they put in this pork? Well, generally, I don't, generally, I, I, I really do not like um, beef, meat, those kind of things. I really like. I prefer fish, chicken, and all that stuff. I'm not a vegetarian. I just do not like meats and all that stuff. And at a big party, you might find Spanfakel. Beer reigns supreme all over as the third largest consumers of beer mm. after the Czech Republic. Even their president has no problem with public intoxication. What? And Austria. <laughs> Germany is world renowned for their beer, which, by the oh, way. Did that actually happen? Like, is that a real German president? Or that is just. Wait, let me, let me look at this. What the hell? As the third largest consumers of beer after the Czech Republic, even their president has no problem with public intoxication, and Austria. Be. Germany is world renowned for their beer. Tell me that in the comments if it's true. By the way, follows the Reinheitsgebot rule in which they are only allowed to use water, hops, malt, and sometimes yeast. Nonetheless, about 1,300 breweries exist, pumping out Whoa. over 5,000 brands. The oldest continuously Whoa. existing brewery in the world, started by Benedictine monks in 1040 AD, can be found here. Germany takes the environment very seriously and for the past two decades has been going on a major green revolution. As of today, they have the largest installed solar power capacity and green infrastructure practices like home installed turbines and solar panels have seen a huge surge in the past 10 years. Years. Forests dominate the southern regions where the landscape gets hillier and mountainous. The most famous one being the Black Forest or the Schwarzwald in Baden-Württemberg. Deer, bears, boar, mm. foxes, badgers, and the national animal, the eagle, can be found thriving in these parts. Nonetheless, economically, Germany is known mostly for their exceptional engineering and industry production. Companies we've all heard of like Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes, Benz, Porsche, Audi, Telecom, Nivea, DHL. That Bosch. is crazy. Like, if thinking about it, so, so, the number of 
worldwide renowned companies that are from Germany, uh, of, uh, of German origin. Crazy. And, and we always talk about this thing in my country, German machine. Like if you buy any products compared to like, you know, Japan products, like German products are more expensive, but they are more durable. They are better for the most part. Though the problem it always comes that if it spoils, you will not be able to afford, like it's available, but it's too expensive. So affording spare parts for you to repair these, <laughs> these um, things that you want to repair is actually, so most people just go for Japanese products because it's cheaper to acquire. It's also cheaper to maintain compared to German products. But ultimately, German products are known in my country as like the ultimate, but it's, more, it's for rich people. Adidas Puma! Adidas Puma! Yeah, it's kind of like the whole biscoito bolacha thing from Brazil. Remember? Well, we have mud flats, tornadoes, from pork, beer, mountains. All that's missing is people. Level three. Fun little side note, in Germany, this is three, not this. Now, if the EU was a family, Germany would kind of be like the dad who got out of rehab, reconciled with his wife and kids, and is taking his new life very seriously as he is haunted by the demons of his past every day. First of all, the country has about 82 million people and is the most populated in the EU, second most in Europe after Russia, and has the fourth largest nominal GDP in the world. About 80% of the country identifies as ethnically German, 12% other Europeans, mostly Polish, Italian, Dutch, and so on. Turks make up about 3.5%, Asians at 2%, and the rest are made up of other groups like Africa. Americans and Americans. Also, they use the Euro, they use the C and F type outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Germany is without a doubt a global powerhouse. It is the strongest economy in the EU and makes up about 16% of the union's population. It's the third largest exporter and importer of goods in the world. After the United States, Germany is also the second most popular global migration destination. Germany yeah. experiences a high standard of living, tuition-free universities, if you get accepted, that is, a mostly government-subsidized universal healthcare system, about a quarter is still privatized, and state pension for retirement at age 16. Now, when it comes to language, things get a little tricky. Each state kind of has their own type of German. However, to get by, most Germans learn how to speak Hochdeutsch, or High German, which is the standard dialect. The European Charter, however, protects the minority languages of Frisian, Danish, Romani, Sorbian, which is like a Slavic-based language used along the Czech-Polish border, and Plattdeutsch, or Low German, which has similarities to Dutch and is typically used by the Amish and Mennonite communities across the world. In terms of regional distinctions, though, Germany is kind of divided into five cultural areas, Rhineland, East, and Middle Deutschland, Norddeutschland, Baden-Württemberg, and Bavaria. Rhineland is on the west side and has a culture somewhat more influenced by France, more Catholics, carnival celebrations mm. are huge out here. That's East interesting. and Germany was the part that used to be its own country for 40 years as it was influenced by the Soviets. Sorbians can also be found here too. Northern Germany has a coastal sea culture that identifies closer with Denmark and the Netherlands. They're also known for being kind of quiet and reserved. Baden-Württemberg has an interesting Swabian culture where they speak a dialect so thick that only about 40% of it is intelligible to other Germans. And then you have Bavaria, which is where the Americanized, perpetuated stereotypes about Germany came from with Lederhosen, Dirndls, Half Timber, Beer Houses, and Cuckoo Clocks. For the record, Germans are sick of those stereotypes. It's like saying all Americans are cowboys with guns and horses. <laughs> Speaking of stereotypes, some of the stereotypes in Germany include things like Saxons being very indecisive, Berliners are always bragging about themselves, Swabians are stingy, Bavarians drink too much, Hessians talk too much. Bavarians oh. actually do drink. Like, I, I know this through uh, football. Like, as Americans know, it's soccer. So that's how I know that. And because they always talk about these bar Bavarians, you know, in terms of how they used to drink and all that stuff. That is Bayern Munich. Um, that is soccer stuff. So most of you may not really know about that. So, like, I know that they drink a lot. So I, I knew that one. Steiners don't talk enough, and so on. What Words are you hiding? Regions too. <laughs> For example, in High German, you would say Auf Wiedersehen. But in Bavarian, you would say Fiat die Gott. In Kölsch, you would say Tschüss. And in Rhineland, you might say Ayus. And there's so many compound words that get really long and complicated, like Rindfleischertiketierungsüberwachungsaufgabenübertragungsgesetz. <laughs> this is because many words are mertudig, or ambiguous words that are kind of elongated to give off an extensive meaning. Germans have very vivid imaginations and make up words for everything. Like my favorite word, Backpfeifengesicht. Not this time. By the way, for the record, this letter makes a double S sound. However, spelling reformers have tried to decrease the usage of this letter in recent years, which has led to some protests. Germans 
also love dubbing everything from foreign media into German. Some like this, some don't, but either way, it's here to stay. About 60% of the country identifies at least nominally as Christians, split between Protestants and Catholics. Germany was even the birthplace of the Protestant Reformation, split from the Catholic Church by Martin Luther. Otherwise, the rest are mostly agnostic or irreligious, with a noticeable community of Muslims, mostly from the huge Turkish and Middle Eastern communities, at about 5%, as well as a few Jews, Buddhists, and Hindus rounding up the remainder 1%. To kind of get a feel of what it's like to be German, you kind of have to understand where they've come from. After World War II, they kind of had a lot of work to do. However, it wasn't until the mid-50s and early 60s that the Wirtschaftswunder, or economic wonder, happened, to which almost everybody got to work. Basically, this guy envisioned and implemented a social market economy combined with free market capitalism alongside socialist policies that established fair competition in a welfare state. Hmm. GDP increased by 80%, investments by 120%, labor forces were utilized to the maximum, things started to get better. In Germany, all children are corralled into general public schools until age 10, when they are given the option to enroll in three different types of middle schools. Gymnasium, okay. geared towards focusing on higher linguistic, nice. mathematic, and science fields for universities. Realschule, a middle ground type of school. And Hauptschule, a school that is geared towards helping kids that seem to show promise in specific vocation or trades. Germany also has the largest music market in the EU and the third in the world after the US and Japan. What? They love preserving their heritage and culture through music and art. In fact, there are around 130 national orchestras, mostly supported by public money. And artists get a 50% reduction in health insurance through a special type of offer in the legal system. One thing that still kind of supposedly maintains itself in Germany is the mindset of Vergangenheitsbewältigung. Totally butchered that! Which kind of translates to a lingering sense of guilt from the past. Germans have reportedly some of the lowest levels of national pride, and unless if you're at a soccer game, chances are you will almost never see anyone holding a German flag wow. and waving it in any kind of like patriotic. That has to be because of the whole um, World War II stuff. Like, I just. <sighs> I don't know. Do you, uh, people have to understand that in this life, um, I just, I just, I just don't feel people should be blamed for what their forefathers did in the past. That's just how I feel about it. Like, usually, if it's like, I mean, there's different between if it was. I know that there are still wounds from what the Germans did during that period, but at the end of the day, like not feeling except maybe the country is terrible like maybe the living conditions economy is terrible and all that maybe you can hate the country but maybe other thing is okay and you are living good lives but just because of the fact that your forefathers did one or two things that were terrible i just don't think you should feel depressed about it that's just my opinion though setting. It's weird, but it's kind of how things are. You monster! <laughs> They've monster. made great strides to move on from the past. Nazi flags and Mein Kampf are incredibly illegal items to own in Germany, and they even have a rule, the Volkswertzung, which basically says you cannot talk trash by denying the past atrocities. Some people say this infringes on free speech, others say it's good because it solidifies truth. Otherwise, some notable Germans throughout history include Charlemagne, although he was a Frank, but eh, I guess it kind of counts, Albrecht, Dürr, David Friedrich, Gutenberg, Bach, Beethoven, Karl Benz, Albert Einstein, Although Americans would like to claim that he moved to the U.S. and became an American. <laughs> Johannes Kepler, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, Friedrich Schiller, Michael Schumacher, Alex von Humboldt, and of course Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels co-founded Marxism. <clears throat> but one thing Germans do best would have to be diplomacy. To this day, the German passport holds the most visa-free nations out of any other country in the world, just beating Sweden. Therefore, you can kind of conclude that Germany kind of knows how to relate to people. Let's find out how in the final round, level four. Germany knows how to make friends. They have over 220 diplomatic missions abroad and over 350 honorary consuls and have an incredibly high position of authority in the EU. Their closest African friend would probably be Namibia. As a former German colony way back in the 19th century, Namibia held on relations and to this day, German is still a recognized language in Namibia. Germans hmm. have been supporting and sharing ties both economically and ideologically for over a century. Indians- I didn't know that Namibia, that Namibians some, Nabi some Namibians speak German and they were actually like a colony of Germany. I didn't know that. That is, I mean, it's always great to learn things every day. South Korea are really close friends in Asia. India supported both East and West Germany during the Cold War, and after reunification, they were like, woohoo, even better. And Germany is to South Korea what Japan is to France. They love to piggyback off of each other's ideas and cultures, especially in the automotive industry. Many South Koreans were sent to Germany after the Korean War to work abroad and study, and Germans have been growing in fascination with visiting South Korea. The US is probably the closest ally outside of the EU. About 30% of Americans claim German heritage, and after World War II, the Marshall Plan allowed the US to give 
with post-war aid to Germany, which helped kickstart the economic recovery. Germany was a key figure in the formation of the State of Israel after World War II, which after the Holocaust left an obligation to invest in the building up of a Jewish community. Turkey is probably the closest Middle Eastern ally, as the Turks make up the largest Asian demographic in Germany, although many of them may or may not also identify as Kurds. But since Kurds don't have a state of their own, they usually go under Turkish passports when immigrating and are documented as such. Their best friends, however, would probably be literally all their neighbors. The thing is, Germany is kind of like Bosnia and Herzegovina, in which, by default, they kind of get friends based off of the regional alliances. Bavarians get along with Austrians, Baden-Württembergs get along with Switzerland, mm. East Germany has good relations wow. with the Slavic countries, nice. the Rhine nice. states love Belgium, Luxembourg, and France, and the North side loves the Netherlands and Denmark. France, though, is kind of like the trophy wife of Germany, as the two have had an angry start, but then eventually fell in love and worked together beautifully. France is like the beautiful, flashy spokesperson for the EU that stands in the spotlight as Germany stands in the background, managing all the money and logistical work. In conclusion, although Germanic peoples have existed for thousands of years, an actual unified German state didn't appear until kind of recently, and the brief time that they've been around, they've kind of gone through some of the most intense, world-revolutionizing historical events possibly imagined. Yet, they've come out working hard and building their way up to become a world superpower. You gotta give it to them. There's something about the Germans. And with that, final boss level complete. Wow, what an interesting video. I didn't even see that coming. <laughs> I did not see that coming one bit. I was, I was like, oh, what? I thought it was going to be more of like this kind of, um, I, like, I don't know the English to use here. Is it like a documentary kind of video? Like, I didn't know it to be like, you know, a fun kind of, you know, that kind of like oversimplified kind of video or something. I didn't think, I didn't think of it that way one bit before I, before I checked it out. Well, this, this is interesting. I'll be checking out more um videos from this channel you guys if you have any suggestion which country you want me to check out from this channel put it down in the comments um i will check it out in future thank you guys for watching love you guys till next time